Hello and welcome to the course. This is uh, the first section where we are going to analyze the main lines and also I'll show you game examples so that you can uh, learn not only the move order but the plans, the ideas and typical maneuvers. What we are going to analyze in this position? Uh, let's go back. White start with knight f3. Here we play d5, g3. And I suggest you to play knight c6. The idea of knight c6 move is that if white continues developing his pieces, we play e5. We totally get control over the center. And um, later we even dominate here by advancing one of our pawns, e4 or d4. That's why the most competitive move in this position is d4. By playing this move, white wants to show that black knight on c6 is in a bad position. And yes, that's true. Usually, when uh, people play d5 against of d4, they want to use the c-pawn to fight for the center by advancing the pawn to c5. Or sometimes they play c6 if white plays c4 to attack the pawn on d5. Uh, if you remember the other course that I created that is called Semislav Defense is devoted to this line where um, black locates his pawn like this d5 c6 c6 okay anyway here we have a knight on c6 it's a possible move and this is what I recommend you to play and this move has its own advantages and disadvantages moreover Maybe white is not familiar how to play against this opening, especially on this level, like uh, maybe below 2300. It's not easy for white to find the best way to uh, play against knight c6. So that we can still get a playable position. Uh, sometimes the position can be even better. Of course, sometimes it's unclear who is better, but... Uh, anyway, the position is playable, and this is what we need when we play as black. Bishop f5. There are three typical ways to continue this um, game with white pieces. Bishop g2, c3 or c4, and actually c4 is considered to be the main one. By playing this move, white wants to show that... The knight is on c6 and the pawn can't move here, so it's only e6 pawn that can support the pawn on d5. However, e6 is a good move in this position, and if c takes on d5, e takes on d5. Another possible move that I actually don't recommend is e5. I would say that this move is dubious move. Uh, why? Because then, for example, knight e5, mm -hmm. knight e5 d takes e5, d takes on c4, queen a4 check, c6, and here bishop b7. And here bishop g2. And I would evaluate this position as slightly better for white. As for me, I wouldn't like uh, to play it as black. That's why here I recommend to play e6. Bishop g2. However, Using our bishop and knight, we can play knight b4 to threaten to play knight c2. Here, I believe 90% of your opponents would play knight a3 to protect the c2 square. However, now let's also analyze two other moves. For example, if you are playing against a grandmaster, he probably knows that uh, here, for example, castle kingside is the best continuation. But let's uh, just check another move, queen a4. It's not a good move, just c6 can be played. Then, for example, knight a3, but black can capture on c4 with the idea to play b5. Here, black is much better. Knight a3. So, I believe this is the most popular move. This is how uh, people play against me. 
Then you should play h6. This is a sneaky move. The idea of this move is that we prevent the bishop coming to g5, so we didn't play knight f6, because we don't want the bishop go there. Also, we get a square for our bishop to escape. We also keep g5 in mind uh, if, for example, uh, one of the... <clears throat> we also keep we also keep g5 in mind in case if bishop goes to f4. In some positions it can be helpful. We also keep in mind g5 in case if bishop goes to f4. In some positions uh, it's a useful move. Okay, castle, knight f6 now. Then bishop f4 can be played or bishop d2. Let's start with bishop d2. How to play in this position? There are several things that we can do. a5 can be played immediately. Uh, knight c6. This is a, an interesting move. How to continue? For example, queen b3. Rook b8. Knight c2. Uh, the knight on c2 is a bad piece, as well as on a3. Bishop e7. Knight a3. Bishop e4, then for example bishop c3, and um, I would say that this position is approximately equal. Of course, I don't like the position of the knight on c6, but at the same time all other black pieces are fine. While for example the bishop on g2 is not a good piece. Also, it's difficult to interact with these two knights. The bishop on c3 is like a pawn. It doesn't do really much. Instead of playing knight c6, a5 can be played. This is another option than c5. If, for example, in this position we play knight c6, then knight b5, bishop e7, bishop f4, rook c8. Knight e5, knight takes knight, pawn takes knight to e4, attacking on c5. Uh, but then c6, b6. It's clear that if we capture, then knight e7 is played and he takes on c6 with his knight. b6, a3. Castle. Then, for example, if he plays f3, then we can play bishop c5 as well as knight c5, b4. Knight a6. B takes a5, B takes a5, the position is approximately equal. <clears throat> if, for example, here he plays knight d4, we have to go back with our bishop, then f3, knight c5. However, I don't really uh, like this position for black, that's why I don't recommend knight c6 move in this position. Instead, we'd better play knight e4 or c6. If, for example, c6, then we will be transposed to the main line of this variation. For example, queen a4, just bishop e7. One of the options. The other one is to play knight d7, and actually this option I like more. Bishop b4, a takes on b4, queen b4, and b6, threatening to take on c5. Rook f to c1 protecting this pawn. And in this position we can take on c5 or play bishop e7. For example, bishop e7, queen c3, castle. So it didn't make sense to take because here the pawn was hanging. Here, for example, bishop e7. We are likely to take on c5 maybe later. We also have this move in mind to increase the pressure on c5. For example, queen c3, uh, we can take on c5 immediately or just castle. Um, if we castle and he takes here, queen b6, queen takes c6, queen takes on b2. If queen d7, here we just take on a3 with our bishop, 
Yes, we are one pawn down, but here I would say that our position is slightly better because of a bishop pair. And the weakness on a2. Instead of playing bishop e7, we may take on c5 immediately. d takes c5 and then just rook b8. For example, then queen c3 or something like that. Then we take on c5 with the bishop, sacrificing the pawn on g7, uh, rook h7. Queen g8 doesn't really make much sense because here just bishop f8 and his queen is uh, trapped. That's why after rook h7 he goes back. And uh, yes, we are down a pawn, but our pieces location is better, and at least here we have a compensation. Instead of playing knight d7, we may play bishop e7 immediately. He takes, queen takes on b4, castle. Uh, this is where we sacrifice the pawn on b7, but if he takes it, uh, here we may play rook b8. Queen c6 and queen a5 with the idea to trap uh, the queen by playing rook c8. Knight a5, rook fc8, e4, and finally he loses his queen. Of course, this position is unclear, and uh, white has a compensation for a queen, but the position is playable. So it's up to you which line to choose. Here in this position you have knight c6 move that I don't actually recommend but it's a possible move. c6 or knight e4. If knight e4 is played then bishop b4, a takes b4, knight c2 attacking the pawn. b6, he takes, pawn takes and then we may play this position. If here he captures on uh, b4 then we can start the attack on this side by playing h5, for example. Here we are one pawn down, but it looks like these two knights are stuck here. And we have a kind of a compensation here. I would say that this position is unclear. Okay, let's go back. Looks like c6 is uh, the most strongest move. Uh, that allows us to sacrifice the pawn on b4, but uh, with the help of knight d7, win it back. Okay, let's go back. Instead of bishop d2, what if bishop f4? This is the second line that can be played. c6. Here he has two options. To play queen b3 or c5. If queen b3, a5. Knight a5, bishop a7. Rook f to c1, castle... If c5 is played, knight e4. So here, of course, um, our knight on b4 looks good, especially if he has no ideas how to capture this knight. I think the best way he can do is to trade uh, this knight with his knight by playing knight c2. Then f6, he goes back to d3 and queen d7. Next, uh, we play g5. The position is approximately equal. If c5 is played, then just a5. And the best thing that he can do is to attack this uh, knight with the help of his bishop and queen from a4 or b3. Uh, that was knight a3 move. This is um, one of the most popular lines here, maybe the most popular one. And um, here you just saw that black is able to equalize the position or at least get a playable position and successfully play for three results. Uh, castle king side, this is the best continuation. Knight c2. Here he has two options to take on d5 or play knight h4. If knight h4, then knight a1. Knight f5, he takes f5. Knight c3 and queen d7. We are up a rook in this position, but 
At the same time, we understand that the knight is likely to die. Bishop f4, bishop d6. He takes, if then queen a4 check, queen d7. Queen b4, rook b8. He captures only one, so now we are only up the exchange. But then d takes on c4, queen c4, and knight is 7 Finally, we castle, and then I would say that this position is better for black. Of course, he could take on d5 earlier, but uh, it doesn't bring him any advantage. We can play c6 as well as knight e7. What if now c takes on d5? Knight a1, d takes e6. Uh, another option in this position is to play e4, but that's fine for us. We play bishop e4, d takes e6, f takes on e6. Knight c3, bishop takes on f3. Bishop f3, queen d7. This is a very important move. It's okay to sacrifice on b7. Rook b8, bishop goes back. Knight f6. Bishop a3, rook takes on b2, queen takes on a1, and this position is approximately equal. How to continue? I would say rook b6, and uh, if I were black, I would allow uh, white to win the exchange back. Because in this position, we are one pawn up, and if we just finish our pieces development with bishop a7 and castle, or king f7, then uh, we have good chances to win. However, in this position he may play knight d5, knight takes on d5, and queen e5 check. But then we play knight e7, and we have to defend this position. Bishop h5, then uh, looks like g6 has to be played, otherwise just rook d1, pinion our king. So here g6, he takes here, g takes on h5. So this is why he uh, decided to uh, sacrifice the knight on d5. Then, for example, let's say queen h7, queen e5, and here we have two minor pieces against the rook and the pawn. Uh, approximately equal, uh, taking into account the weakness of our king. If we, for example, trade the queens here, then I would say that black is better. That was e4 move. Instead, he could capture on e6. Uh, bishop e6 is a mistake. If so, then knight c3, c6, queen d3, knight f6, bishop d2, and for example, bishop b4 and e4 is played. So we lose our knight, we are down the exchange, but he has a strong center, and at least he has a compensation here. His four pieces and a center are quite strong, and it's difficult to play this position for black, but uh, anyway, it's playable. <clears throat> Instead of taking with the knight, you should take with the pawn here. Then knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7. Our plan just to finish our pieces development, and then we'll be okay. Knight h4. That's why here we have no squares to move with our bishop. That's why castle. He takes, pawn takes, queen d3, queen d7. If he captures on b7, rook b8. Rook a1, c6. This position is approximately equal. However, uh, I would call it unclear and playable for both sides. Uh, if I were black, I would prefer to play with extra exchange. So... I would prefer black position, of course. But this is almost the worst scenario that you can get in this opening. Looks good. Generally looks good, because um, in some other openings you can even get... In some other openings you can even get a worse position. Okay, anyway. Uh, that was C4 move. What if, for example, c3 is played? It's not a good move, and actually, after this move, I would say that um, it's already black who is better. 
why uh, this move can be played? When uh, people don't know how to play this position, when they don't really want to get any advantage, uh, but um, maybe they are sure that they are able to outplay you during the middle game or end game, they may allow to play such move because this is a solid move definitely. But at the same time, this move doesn't allow them to fight for any advantage. Um, how to play then? Queen d7. Also, you may play e6. Then, for example, bishop g2, bishop e7. Another good move in this position is h6. Castle, knight f6, b4, bishop d6. Uh, why d6? Because we secure the e7 square for our knight from c6. Especially in case if white pushes the pawn forward. A4, castle. H4, then just bishop to h7. This is our plan. Rook e8, e5. However, bishop e7 is just another idea. We want to make this move first because after knight f6, bishop g5 can be played. Castle, knight f6, bishop g5, knight e4. He takes. And uh, if, for example, here he decides to play c4, then of course we can play queen b4. Uh, also, I would recommend you this move. Knight d2 and castle queen side with the idea to continue the attack here on the king side. However, queen b4 is okay. In such a case, he plays something like queen c1, and now we can castle queen side and continue our plan, or just h6 and castle king side. So we are very flexible in this position. We may take on c4, uh, of course, not immediately, but later. However, uh, e5 is our plan, or we should locate our knight on b4 depends on um, the moves played by white okay fine so it's up to you which option to choose bishop e7 or h6 or even uh, queen d7 immediately after c3 knight d2 for example f6 knight h4 bishop g4 h3 uh, bishop h5. So this line is considered to be more aggressive. And after knight b3, just e5. So in this position, black plays like he is white and has extra temper. And looks like it's not um, clear what white can do in this position to stop this activity. So maybe this is the best thing you can do after. Uh, c3 to play queen d7, f6 and e5. Or you may choose a more conservative line with e6 and h6, for example, here. Then knight f6, bishop d6. Up to you. And of course, it depends on who are you playing with. Okay, uh, let's go back. Uh, let's also take into account uh, such moves like bishop f4 what would you do after that if you meet this move e6 bishop g2 bishop d6 e3 knight f6 castle castle then he plays a3 to prevent knight b from move but it's fine just h6 uh, to stop bishop g5 as well as to have the h7 square for the bishop Knight d2, but g5, forcing him to trade. Then we take with the pawn, and then we push our e5 pawn. The position is equal. Instead of this move, of course, we should analyze this option. Then bishop e4, f3, slightly weaken his position, then bishop g6. Let him take knight uh, to f6 so he can't play e4 then he blunders the pawn on d4 that's why c3 but now we are first we play e5 queen b3 
how do we defend this pawn? We can play rook b8. D takes e5, knight takes e5. Bishop f4, and then just go back to d7 uh, with the idea to go to c5, maybe. Again, the position is equal. So don't be afraid of knight h4. It's okay to trade this bishop for a knight, especially if you weaken his position by playing bishop e4, forcing him to play f3. And now the main uh, option here, bishop g2, e6. Castle. If c3, then now you have to play h6 and play this line. With the idea to play e5. If knight h4, just bishop e7. e4 is not a big problem here. It, you have now three attackers, so he has to prepare uh, the e4 move, but then you play e5 first. He castles. And then you play knight b4, knight a3. Another option in this position is to play knight e1. If he does this move, then bishop e7 to stop bishop g5 move, c3, then just retreat to c6, knight d3, knight f6. Here our task is just to finish our development. a5 to prevent b4 activity because now we don't have many squares for this knight. f3, and here we take on d3, queen takes, and h5, with the idea to start the attack on the king side. Looks aggressively, but it makes sense. e4, h4, e5, knight h5. If now he plays g4, we may play g5 with our bishop. Why? Because he can't capture on h5. If he does it, then we take on c1, rook c1, and h3. And if he takes on h3, then queen g5 winning the rook. If he does f4, then h takes on g3. h takes on g3. And how would you continue in this position? g5. Correct. So here the position is closed. We want to open it on the king side to be able to attack his king. He also is not developed, uh, but uh, we may locate our king is even. Uh, but we may even locate our king on d7 here. That was knight e1 move. If instead he plays knight e3, what is likely to be met? Then h6. However, bishop e7 is still a possible continuation. Bishop f4, knight f6. Knight h4, bishop g4. h3, bishop h5. g4, bishop g6. If he takes, we take with the h pawn. c3, knight c6. This position is approximately equal. He has to play knight c2, I believe. Uh, but instead of bishop e7, I actually recommend to play h6. Yes, it looks like a tempo loss, but at the same time, uh, this move also allows us to uh, save our light squared bishop. Knight e5, bishop d6. Bishop d2. And how would you continue in this position? <clears throat> You may pause this video and try to find the next move yourself. But first, notice that you are not developed yet. If, for example, here you play c6, then c3 can be played. Knight a6, but e4. And if bishop takes on e4, he comes to c4 with his other knight. Knight f6, for example, queen b3. Rook b8, knight d6, queen d6, and bishop f4. And now we are in trouble. Queen d5 can be played, and uh, it looks fine, because the rook here is protected by the knight. But after queen a3, I would definitely say that it's white who is better. He prevents us from castling, and it's not obvious what we can do. He is down a pawn, but... Anyway, how to finish our pieces development? You see how many weaknesses on our duck squares we have.
so I don't recommend to play c6 as well as a5 then c3 bishop e5 d takes e5 knight retreats but f4 so here we gave him a bishop pair knight g7 knight b5 castle bishop e3 queen d7 and c4 he wants to open the position uh, so that's why i don't recommend it to you uh, instead i recommend to play knight f6 immediately c4 a5 now knight b5 it's okay to castle if you play bishop e7 this is a critical mistake because then a3 knight c6 and rook c1 can be played so he pushes more pressure on this file he is likely to <coughs> he is likely to take on uh the c he's likely to take on d5 open his uh, rook and uh, put the pressure on c7 so that's why we'd better allow him to take our bishop on d6 if we castle here the position is equal oh i can show you what can happen here we take with the pawn and here we take with the pawn too looks like our pawn structure is totally ruined but our pieces location is better queen b6 knight f4 rook a5 this is how we protect the pawn on d5 and also can attack this pawn uh, this is a fragment from a game that was played between two grandmasters and later you can see how black was able to equalize the position so we double the rooks on the a file to attack on a2 g5 knight d3 he's threatening to take on uh, b4 that's why here we should take but uh, then we also win a pawn here queen f5 king to g7 h4 g4 bishop d5 uh, this move doesn't work because of queen a5 e4 rook a1 and then it's equal we can play queen b1 to stop e5 move uh, we can also take here because uh, the best thing that white has is a perpetual check so for example um, we take on b2 he takes on b7 or he may play e5 then we take on d5 then queen g4 and uh, this is a perpetual check king f8 queen c8 if king g7 queen g4 if king e7 here just the same thing and this is how white repeats the position of course um, this move order is not obligatory and you are unlikely to meet it in your games so but this is how i just demonstrated you that in this position even with such a bad pawn structure you are able to equalize the position okay let's go back to the very beginning uh what sh you should definitely learn in this uh, variation first if c4 is played with you then e6 bishop g2 knight b4 and in this position i definitely recommend to learn this line where he castles knight c2 and here c takes on d5 so try to play this line properly in case if you are going to play with a strong player uh, for example over 2300 if knight a3 is played it's fine just play h6 this is important move that you also should remember and keep in mind the idea that you may allow to sacrifice the pawn on b4 if then you are likely to win the pawn on c5 by playing b6 and of course uh, if bishop g2 is played e6 castle knight b4 and knight a3 in this position again don't forget to play h6 here black 
is undeveloped, but um, after he finishes his development, um, the position is equal. This is what you should learn. I don't really require you to learn the move order, but the move order of a few lines here and the main idea and basic plans like bishop f5 knight b4 okay thank you for your attention in the next lecture we will continue with the game example